All right, so we're going to call to order the finance uh, team meeting for September, whatever day it is. Uh, 16th. 16th. Oh, yeah, Mexican Independence Day. You guys have it, especially. <laughs> My uh, birthday, more importantly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today's meeting is obsessively to go over the um, agenda and any other topic that somebody might have to bring up. But I uh, mean, Purpose of the meeting is the agenda. Uh, hi, Jim. Oh, nice, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi to everybody by Zoom, too. So somebody seems grumpy, but anyway. Let's, uh, <laughs> and his father trying to get his hair done on every mask. He's like, in a bitch. <laughs> that was Jim. You guys probably didn't right. see That was Jim Fletcher coming in. So. He came and left. And Good there's morning. Joe. Good morning, Joe. All right. Hey, Joe. Hey. Um, Joe, we're going to be going over the agenda. So we just opened the meeting and we're recording. Uh, all right, so let's go through. Um, it's up on the board, so you might want to sit with it. Okay, you can see it there. Okay, so a uh, couple of presentations. So the first chunk of the meeting really, I feel like, is going to be about form based code right, right. <laughs> as we're looking at the agenda. We'll just kind of, I won't go into the details, but Bergman will be here just do an overview of kind of the timeline of how we got to this point and what it means and, and all of that stuff. Uh, and then we can go into our three public hearings uh, associated with the form based code. So I won't go into the, any of that unless somebody has questions about, I think we're all pretty right. familiar with, with yeah. that. Okay. So then we have three continued resolutions. The one is the adoption of the form based code document itself. So I'll just kind of skip over that and keep going here. And then adopts it as a, a way it can be used in the town. It's not establishing it for any particular area. The first one. Right. The first one is actually the adoption of the document, the planning document. Right? Yeah, right. Then the second one is the local law to actually put it in code and the third one actually rezones the properties just so okay so okay uh the next one is um secret determination so this is the local law relative to the digital signs that we've continued i did put a note here there's another resolution on this agenda resolution 208 relative to the settlement agreement mm -hmm. i would strongly encourage us in the town board meeting to maybe hold off on this one and do the other discussion first. And when we get to that, I'll, I'll okay. explain why. Yeah, so. as, I, as I was reading it, I have, I have a couple of questions that I looked ahead on and I'm going to ask I, a question. I, I had <laughs> issues on every single page of the agreement. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Um, and then the, this one is the other continued resolution, the policy relating to uh, COVID-19. Um, I did put a note on here. I know we touched on this uh, the last meeting. There are so many changes still happening with this. I did ask if we could just hold off on this, table it indefinitely for right now. I keep hearing that the executive order that the, that the president declared 100 employees or more, that that may impact us because even with our temporary and seasonal employees, from what I understand, that which is more than 100, we have 107 that it'll trigger it for us. And I also keep hearing that the governor may do a new executive order. So there's just so many moving yeah, pieces. It feels like we, our, our policy shouldn't be standalone. It should be to follow their policies rather than create something new for us. You know, yeah. that, I mean. Also, also a federal judge in Utica put a hold on New York State's policy. So we have to at least see what happens with that. Right. There's so many different. Yeah, it feels like that would be a good idea. Yeah. Okay, so then the monthly financial statements. Okay, so then the first finance related resolution other than the typical monthly things. Uh, the tentative budget. So this would take the tentative budget and declare it as a preliminary. You still can make whatever changes you want to it, but it just establish it as the preliminary budget and sets the public hearing for October. The I think that is the 19th, is that the date? Yes, 18th, October 18th. And are there any more questions since the meeting that we had? The um, only questions I received are the ones that we talked about last week with you. Okay. In the hey, Doug, Doug? Yes. I have a question. You have Jim's salary at 106, 520, but, in, but in the budget, it's only 54, 5. So it's highway plus water. 
but your the water is not an elected position it's an appointed yeah but that's why it's combined here on this resolution it says highway and water but mine isn't you need to be i think you need to be consistent because mine isn't mine is just my town clerk where jim yeah, your the records management Oh, we should add hers up too, not me. Okay. But it's not my elected um, salary. My elected salary is the 66, which you have correct. But we're not trying to hide the fact that you make a certain amount. That's, I think, the key thing here is this is about yeah. transparency. And so if you're making something as an elected and then uh, certain other things, we should disclose that because that's what people are looking at. They're saying, oh, what are they paying people? And what we're paying people is might be part elected and part whatever. I, I think well, that it should be as transparent as possible. So the, 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 there's actually regulations relative to we have to disclose the elected salaries. So right. that's why we actually do this this way. And then obviously everything is disclosed in the budget. Right. I get what Gene's saying. For what's different though is Gene's is a couple of thousand dollars stipends, Jim's is half a salary. So Right. Half of it's elected and half of it's appointed. So that's the big difference. But in the thing, in the concept of consistency, we can either list them separately or we can, you know, wh whatever you guys prefer to do. But we can obviously amend that resolution. I feel like if I was a taxpayer and I, I had something given to me that said, hey, Jim makes 54000 and then somebody else said to me, but you know, he gets the water thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like the town was trying to hide something. And mm -hmm. so I feel like the consistency should be on that. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if, if we want to put it into a table where we say elected salary and then other positions or something like that, that would be fine. But I, I, I feel like the purpose is to make sure that the taxpayer is aware of what's going on and we don't have anything to hide. Right. Exactly, exactly. And I think I like what Linda just suggested is if you put it into a table of some sort where like the town clerk is 66, 583, and then the um registrar is another whatever um i think breaking it out can help people to understand yeah i i think so that way people see the difference in the positions and the water and district still pay for water for his water salary right mm -hmm. so technically that is a tax <laughs> And right, right. It's just not an elected position. That's the point is that these aren't the elected tax. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We can, uh, I'll, I'll work on something for Monday night where we list separately the elected and the the other, and then the total. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. the most transparent yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Kathy, did you have, I think you had started to say something. I didn't know if you had anything on that or not. I just think the supervisor salary, I think I'm making like 20400 this year or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the 2022 budget, uh, Doug had proposed bringing it back because it's a new term, new person for sure, bringing it back to 20 and then uh, instead of constantly inflating it. We had that discussion last week. Uh, uh, then that should be the same for all the board members too, I'm assuming. I, I think it should say what it was at least, but you know, I'm only one person. Right, so this is for the 22 budget, but, but obviously you guys can make any amendments you want and, and change it to whatever, so. Okay. Um, okay, resolution 208 is the Lamar settlement agreement. I don't, so, um, I, I know, Linda, you said you had questions on this. I have gone through, I literally have comments on every single page. Um, there's a variety of issues going on here. Um, <clears throat> I think most concerning is, to me, is the continual change. And I'll give you an example. The, um, the, the settlement agreement in the verbiage for instance, says the maximum height of the 332 sign at 22 feet. The in the exhibit that they attached, it actually shows it at um, at uh, 25 feet or an increased size of the digital sign. In the 
in the five and 20 sign in the verbiage, they propose it at 25 feet. The exhibit shows it an 11 by 23 foot sign with a 23 foot height. And then they made an application to us for a 24 foot sign with a 12 by 25 digital face instead of the 11 by 23 that's in the in the actual i mean it's just continual change I, after change after change and chris nadler had asked that we just go ahead and put it on the agenda anyway because we need to have conversation in a public session because lamar needs a direction from the board but if there's so many inconsistencies i don't know how to handle it yeah i i feel like what they're that they keep changing, 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 and we're never going to get to where we can approve anything because we're we meet once, you know, we meet for approval once a month. And they kind of feel like they could get an approval any day of the month, and that isn't even gonna fly. But I was concerned with page five of that where it says, Hey, we'll give you the space on the sign if we haven't already sold it. Um, um well. So it guarantees, right? No, it's the first to operation. Get it in at least three weeks early, but if we've already sold it, we won't give it to you, and we'll send it out. Uh, we'll we'll try to give it to you another time, but we won't carry anything forward between the years. So essentially, if they sell their sign for the year at the beginning of the year, there's no slots open for us, and we can't carry anything forward. It's how I read it. I thought that there was um, on, page five. on page four, though, it talks about, yes, it does talk about the carryover and you can't carry that over right. any unused flights. It says cannot carry over um, the and then go town will get six 28 day flights right. be displayed in one of six rotating message slots each calendar year without any charge or cost of to the town. The town's flights shall not overlap. Town may only use one message slot at a time. Um, Go on to the top of page five is where I go. Yeah, and then there is a section, but it's um, the town must inform Lamar of its chosen flights a reasonable amount of time before the 28th day flight began, at least three weeks in advance of all slots during any flight have already been rented to other advertisers. Right, so they can rent our flight. If, if you don't, if, if you, you don't, don't give them the advance notice. No. They don't say that. I they, thought that's what he just read. Yeah, no, I did it again. Well, so there, but so that's yes, that's certainly something we need to. It's the way it's worded. Yeah. It could be more clear. But the other huge concern that I have about the whole verbiage is, it says in here that if at any time in the future that a federal law changes or a state law changes that would require the removal of the Billboard. sign the new billboard that basically Lamar can still request just compensation back to the date of the original installation of the original sign which we never even permitted right it was just installed way back whenever that was yeah. and I'm not even sure when it was because we can't find any record I mean we have records from uh the 90s when this was discussed so it goes back at least that far but it, there's just there's so many pieces to this that, that are just crazy yeah kathy and i don't know if you've had a chance to really go through it in depth yet but i i think that there's a lot of concerns that you would probably so we could see both of them i have gone through it and i agree with what linda's saying um i understand what the understanding of the parties is but it mm -hmm. clearly says what linda's saying which is what i said last time mm -hmm. that if we don't get it in i mean and how often we may need to do it you know, three weeks is a lot of time if there's if stuff going on so uh, although the idea of it was that we would have that space i agree with what linda's saying and that's and also the things that you're saying i have a problem with that open-ended you know we can still i also have problems we join with them in um supporting them if there's litigation over it um i, I wouldn't agree with that this is you know once we've done this it's on them to make sure they comply with whatever federal laws there are. We shouldn't be defending them or joining, supporting them or anything. And I know 
you know, Chris disagreed with me on that, but that's clearly what it says. I have a problem with that as well. So lots of yeah. problems. I, I, I highlighted that. And also on page 10, it says basically that Lamar can shut down, choose to shut down the sign themselves and then request just compensation from the town going back to the original. Yeah, this whole just compensation thing is like a fantasy land for them. They're, uh, they, it isn't realistic for them to think that they would have those terms. So what are we compensating for? The lost Nothing. revenue? Because so there's a so this really all relates to if we were to require the removal of the sign, uh, there's a thing called just compensation that you owe uh, the the entity. And usually, usually, and they teach you this at the Department of State training that an amortization period over a time is just compensation. However, as we have learned that just compensation that amortization when it's on a state road that receives federal funding is not adequate just compensation is what a, we have been informed by a judge so that's how i guess i would say that so, so we ended up in this situation we had given them the length of time where they could have their side knowing yeah. that it was needing to come down they waited to the end of that period and then said by the way we're going to sue you we had that well so yeah. let's just take that point so the the original notification was sent in 2009 that they had a 10-year amortization period was the just compensation and that the signs had to be removed by january 6 2019 in may of 2019 we informed them hey the 10 years is up Over. they turned around and sued hmm. and they won they won? How much do we No, do? no, no. They have not won yet. It's they still, have not. still in litigation. That's what this is, a settlement of it, that well, litigation. It's, it's, that's a nebulous number because it's just compensation. But so instead of compensating them, we are going to grandfather the signs. And that's what this is doing. And they would like us to, rather than grandfather the signs, uh, give them the ability to have some digital billboards in place of the four signs they would have two digital billboards. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we were, we're trying to negotiate these digital billboards. So one of the sweeteners of that was we were, as a town, was we're going to be able to have a slot in the digital thing that we might say, hey, Halloween at Onanda, or whatever uh, event that we're trying to um, promote. Well, you got to get that just compensation thing out there. Right, that, it's over and done with. Right. Yeah, You're that's going to be a challenge, or just define it. But the other thing is that I'm a little bit concerned about, and Kathy, you would you know more about this than me, and I think it's something that maybe we, at some point in time we may need to go into executive session on Monday night to discuss this more. But I said to Nadler, this is just ridiculous. It's insane that we're going back and forth like this. Why don't we just tell them they can keep their four signs? And he said to me, we may be on the hook for all the, I realize, all the legal expenses if we did that. Um, they didn't want to go back to their four signs. And they were, you know, they'd say, hey, look at all of this. So I think more to be de determined and discussed on the whole thing. So we've been I don't know that that's true. If you can, you can just withdraw your, that was, I mean, I, I don't see a judge doing that. I mean, honestly, the, the case law that they're citing is good case law. It's just one local case out of Utica. Um, it was never, it's never been litigated because Lamar hangs their hat on this all the time. Would we want to litigate that? No, because then we're going to, it's going to cost us a lot of money. They've already done it. They have private counsel that they're paying to litigate this stuff. Um, but, you know, it, I don't see it's, it, I don't know. I mean, I think you're right. I think we need to, have to discuss this maybe in um, an executive session. Right. A lot still to figure out with that. Yeah. And that's why I said that other resolution, I don't think you want to take action on that until we can get to this and right. have additional conversation. And well, stuff. and I think it, maybe it'll be good for Lamar to realize that we're, a lot of these things are making it impossible for us to go forward. We're waiting for them to come back with something that isn't changing and that is more reasonable. Right. Well, so then the other thing, just so everybody's aware, so they've officially made application now to the development office to erect these two digital billboards. So it was reviewed at PRC this past week and they had asked me to participate in that portion. And they're like, we can't process this application. Yeah, <laughs> this is not a permissible to... use in the town of Canandaigua. So, you know, I have to wonder if there's a little bit of legal games going on here also, truthfully. So it's 
Well, at the fact that the size can't be nailed down is just crazy. I mean, we have an agreement on what the size should be, and then every time they talk about it, it's a different size. Right. Let's figure out the size. That should not be hard. Right. right. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Um, so this next one, uh, this is the creation. This is actually in the budget for 22, and I realize you haven't put this... Yes, we talked a little bit about this at the last meeting. This is the creation. This is just the civil service creation, is all this is, of the um, position to be shared between the development office and the town clerk's office. So I don't know if you want to chime in on that or not. But. No. And civil service approved it for you? We have to go through this process. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We, have, we want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Get ready for next year. All right. Kate, you want to? Um, yeah, or maybe Jim, um, this is the one where the increased revenue, Jim reached out to us and let him know he had been contacted by a company looking to help pay Brickyard Road. Right. So what it is, is Kinder Morgan came re did repairs, their gas main, uh, they could not find someone to do the paving. So we're going to do the paving for them on Brickyard Road, and that was the cost to do so. Okay. Yeah, so the increased revenue will yeah. increase some of the expense lines to go along with that. Well, and then we'll know it's done right too, which is just great, you know. Mm -hmm. Rather than having favors of that video. Yeah. Well, probably should keep it. Then the ARPA, I'll, I'll yeah. We touched base on this at the last meeting. Yeah. This is that increase for the ARPA money, that four thousand dollars. Um it's just so everybody's aware though on the by Zoom. This is um the state let us know that not all the municipalities accepted their ARPA money, so they divided it up by the municipalities that did, so we get an extra $4,700. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. huge, huge. <laughs> so it isn't too many people who turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a very good thing. Thing. Unless we get a little sweeter. Yeah. Uh, the next one here is uh, two 100-hour contracts with integrated essentially gene just so i changed that because the attachment actually referenced the 100 hours so i just listed it as two 100 instead of one 200 um but um the uh we have a lot going on with integrated as as i think everybody knows we have uh the new phone system coming in we have the new wi-fi system that's being installed we have the all the new cabling and everything that's all being done in this building Plus, we have the cybersecurity grant um, that that's been taking up a lot of the integrated hours. Uh, so we will get money oh, back okay. associated through that grant for that. But Jane, I don't know if there's something else you want to add to that. No. Or... no, that was that was it. That was good. OK. Um, OK, the next one is engineering. This well, is... a few um, smaller budget transfers earlier oh. in the year and then last month. A few projects were approved, so Doug and I, rather than just doing small all year long, felt it was better to just come to the board with a larger budget adjustment, just go ahead and increase that to get enough money in there for the rest of the year. This is specifically Candagua Consolidated. This is, yeah, it really just, involves a lot of the yeah, stuff so that you were doing with the emergency. Yeah, emergency, EPA, and then the green infrastructure resubmission of mm -hmm. the grant. Um, as well as the Wolf House Rosier oh, okay. Matt Plan Report. So yeah. there's a few things going on there we didn't anticipate. Okay. Uh, the next one is an amendment to the form or to the fee schedule to include the form-based code uh, fee for the actual review of the application, as well as the park and rec impact fee associated with the form-based code. Obviously, this makes an assumption that you're going to approve that. So whichever order you do these, but right. Now, does that thousand park and rec go into the CM fund, Doug? Is that um, no? I think we're going to need to actually create a separate to be able to track it separately because okay. it won't have the same restrictions on it that the state in okay. lieu of fee okay. uh, has. So okay. anyway, but Doug, is that why it's being called an impact fee rather than yes. just a rec fee? Okay. Yes. So yep. those fees that uh, those are commercial. Um, projects and so it's for anyone. it's for the form based code it would be uptown specifically in the form based code area and that impact fee is for each residential unit so a 25 unit apartment building is $25,000 fee and that's primarily you know the 
there's a lot of rentals being targeted for uptown. So you would theoretically have a developer that would be absorbing that. Obviously, I'm sure they're going to pass that on through their rental fees, right. but yeah. You know. It's a one-time thing, so they'll you know they'll amortize it over the cost of the program. and the and the form based code document actually details um, the reason and the, and the justification for that and the in, and the increased demand on parks and rec services, obviously, especially in those types of of units and in that area, uh, specifically Blue Heron Park and and Outhouse, as we kind of talked about. So. Um, okay, the next one is uh, been a sore subject for me personally and Gene also. Uh, this we're in dire need of replacing our fire panel, uh, and I feel really bad for the Cheshire Fire Department because they have continuously been responding so many different times. But um, is this part of the reason why it read like so high in the roof, or yes. was there really a temperature no. there? Because it was like. Well, that's the temperature's really that. Yeah, I think it was. Um, they had originally said the reading was like fifteen hundred, but I think it was actually one hundred and fifty or something or other. Right, because I was going to say the roof will be on fire. It's um, <laughs> Gene is working on getting uh, a venting system up there. It is incredibly hot up there. Uh, there is a buildup of heat up there. Even was it yesterday? No, it was the day before. Four, I think, right? It was, uh, I went up in the attic myself and it, it was well over 100 degrees up there, even though it wasn't that hot outside. Um, so we, there's a couple of things going on here. We need a, some sort of a venting system up there with thermostats. So Gene's working on that. And then the replacement of this uh, fire alarm system, the, what's happening is it's different sensors that are going off, which leads us to believe that it's the panel, it's the fire alarm system itself, because you're chasing sensors all over the building. So every time you turn around, the quote unquote fires in a different area of the town hall. So. <laughs> and he said when they put it in test mode, the sensors reset. Mm -hmm. and then go off again so yeah. we, even putting it in test mode wasn't solving the problem and it, no and it was going off this morning when i came in so oh, yeah. oh my gosh yeah yeah so it, we can't have that because we can't have where gesture goes oh there it goes again when mm -hmm. we really have a fire or you know or they keep coming when we don't well, and they're required to respond, as are we. And, it, you know, it's just, it's gotten ridiculous. Last Friday night, I was in Rochester and the fire chief calls me. Gene's in Albany. I'm in Rochester and the fire chief calls me. He's like, Doug, he's like, I can't come either because I'm in Rochester. He's like, the crews are on their way, but is there somebody there to meet him? I'm like, no. <laughs> Thankfully, Jim yeah, came, <laughs> came over. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so. we're, we're we're taking the telephone tree and trying to find somebody who's home and available to come in. Well, you know, when I came in today, that front door was locked. Upstairs, when oh. I waved my hand in front of the thing that said "wave it," mm -hmm. opened. Well, that doesn't mm -hmm. unlock until eight o'clock. Your magic touch. You must oh, have it was like yeah, it was a couple minutes before eight. But like, like I said, when I it, when I waved my hand in front of your little sensor there, it it unlocked the door. Interesting. Well, and it's we'll funny, you know, just good timing when I to take a look at that, I pulled on and it was locked and I said, look at it, it's a good one like that. And boom, click, <laughs> and I came. <laughs> you got the magic touch. I guess yeah, so. I don't I don't know. You better look at that. We don't want Joe in the town hall too often. <laughs> <laughs> That's what those doors are for. <laughs> All, right. All right. Next resolution. Jean, this is your... Uh, records management grant it is it is um this is i think one of three um three resolutions that i have on the agenda this one is for the scanning um, looking to start the scanning right around november 1st they're saying it's going to take um five to four or five six months to complete with um, documents coming in and out. InStream um, was purchased Beals. Um, we've had a, a good working relationship with Beals in the past. They have done all of our um, microfilming of site plans, subdivisions, all kinds of things. I have like 80 rolls of microfilm. So um, we have a great working relationship with them. And they were also noted in the grant application itself. So um, that's that's in stream. So any oh, questions? Is that yeah, what are they scanning? Because is this the same thing that we have in the budget for next year for a scanner? Or is that 
What is no, this? This, is, this is additional. This is, um, we're going to be starting over in the highway and water department and taking all of Jim's road records, water um, maps, um, manuals, files, that kind of stuff, anything that's in his file room, um, getting that prepped and um, out the door to scan. So it's going to come back. We're going to confirm that it's um, one, everything came back. Two, um, that the quality of the scans is there. And that's why I'm hiring a temporary part-time deputy clerk. And that's another resolution. Um, so it's separate. It's, it's a different thing. So um, they're going to be helping us kind of get some catch-up work done. And this is all under the grant. It's um, it's not a grant to where we have to spend money to get money back. Technically, yes. But, um, but it's not a matching grant where we have to spend 20,000 and they'll pay us 20,000. So it's all, it's all in addition to the large format scanner that we're purchasing. And the large format is for using for the planning records then? If the highway ones are all scanned, then what will the large one will be for the planning records? It's anything that is back in the planning or development office, um, past, current and future, if anything comes in, um, those are anything over um, 11 by 17. Um, we need the large format scanner to scan those documents. So it could be a subdivision subdivision plat. It could be site plans. It could be architectural drawings. It could be anything. So and will it be used for the highway going forward once this is all caught up? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's going to be used on right. It's going to be it's here in the lot. office. Um, it's just any large documents that need to get scanned into the laser fish will be used, will be using that large format scanner. Okay, I just, I just wanted to uh, get it yeah. set in my head how it related to the new right. scanner. So, so Jean, with this grant though, that is not going to end up taking care of digitizing all of our records, right? Oh, no, 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 not even close. <laughs> right. That's, that's I think maybe where there's, you know, just to be clear, I mean, we had we had estimated about 15 million documents need to be scanned and um you know this this takes a chunk of it but this grant but there's still no, years out. worth of work in terms of digitizing all this right unfortunately yeah, exactly wish i could get it done by tomorrow but that's right uh -huh. because the digital aspect actually helps staff in reviewing stuff and everything else instead of having to, I mean, because what happens oh, right. now is even like when I'm trying to dig into something, I have to ask the town clerk's office, they have to go to the vault, find <laughs> where the box is, pull the box, yeah. dig into, I mean, this is not like a, an easy thing, whereas the digital aspect, I could go directly and view it myself instead of all of that extra. So it's, you know, it's been a long yeah, time coming, right? <laughs> yeah, and it'd be great um, for town, our planning board, even town board meetings, and the planning board meetings, those kinds of things, just like we've got the um, the new um, comp plan. Um, Sarah emailed it over to us, and I said, Lisa, just put it into Laserfiche, and that way everybody has access to it. Instead of printing out a copy and putting it in the vault, it's going right into Laserfiche. So. Perfect, thanks. So the next resolution is also that, Jean, right? Um, yeah, the next, the next resolution two. is hiring um, an outside consultant to help write policies and procedures dealing with records management. So yeah, that's so our So yeah. this, this one, now isn't something we can just steal from someone else instead of paying somebody $11,000? It's all part of the grant. It is fully funded through the local record management improvement grant. There is no match for us. And it was part of her application to have a, a vendor who was specifically trained in this type of thing, right? To, to develop it for us in this way. Yep. And then also part of the grant was to hire a temporary um, part-time deputy clerk um, Brandy Langan, um, Lindsay and I both, we interviewed um, a couple of candidates and Brandy seemed to come out on top um, and she is available to start October 4th. So she'll be um, putting together training and starting to prep files to go out for scanning starting November 1st, around November 1st. So. Okay, 
The next one, <clears throat> this is, um, truthfully, this resolution really doesn't do anything, but <laughs> I mean, to be 100% honest. So um, we, we have this weird situation where Canada Crossing is a application that's been made to the development office. It's been working through for months now with the planning board and zoning board to get approval. And the planning board and, and the zoning board both have been working with them to try to get the project to be as similar to form-based code as possible, knowing that the form-based code wasn't in existence yet, but knowing that that was the uptown study, that's what was adopted by the town board associated with the uptown study. So that's what they what they've been working this or basing this on. And then um, what happened is the planning board uh, has at their well, let me go back two meetings ago now. Um, they were really encouraging the the applicant to work as closely as possible relative to the the form based code, uh, knowing that that's what the uptown study calls for and that that piece had already been adopted by the board. The form-based code, and also knowing that the town board may adopt the form-based code on September 20th, the form-based code would then kick in, and the form-based code requires that the planning board refer an application to the town board if it's more than, I believe it's 5,000 square feet uh, for acknowledgement before the planning board can grant approval. So long and the short, the planning board was like, okay, trying to help this thing move along, we're going to go ahead and refer this to the town board in case they do adopt this on September 20th so that they can also do that at the same time. However, since that time, the direction has changed a little bit and the applicant is sticking with the underlying community commercial zoning that's in existence for right now. Um, and the zoning board is scheduled to meet on the application on Tuesday, September 21st, the day after the town board meeting. A lot, a lot of moving pieces, and it's just one of these weird situations where the application is coming in while we're looking at making these changes, and so it's been very difficult. Um, I know that there's specific, we've talked about the specifics in terms of the, there's a date of when the building permit is issued that it really is, is what it's supposed to be. Um, but there's so many moving pieces and the developer is really getting frustrated because they're feeling like we're creating hoops, which truthfully, unfortunately, we are in this particular situation just because of the timing of it. So um, this resolution, the, since the planning board actually did refer something to the town board, acknowledges the planning board's referral. And then actually you see here the second uh, be therefore it resolved, the town board makes no determination for or against the application. That way we just say, okay, we're acknowledging you referred this to us, but we're not taking a stance on this and understanding that they're using the underlying zoning. So anyway, all right, I've been saying a lot. Doug, on all Doug I have a quick question up in the title of the resolution. Um, I think we need to take the word out the word point out because we don't have a rochester point road oh, okay and then I, and it's a simple thing i don't think you need to do any motions or anything but i think we'll just I, acknowledge it okay and when then i saw that i'm thinking of the rochester point on the lake on the lake <laughs> in 2000 or in our resolution 218 which is right before this i'd written a note the word authorization is spelled wrong is it? Where is it? Authorization, right there, uh, in the yep, title, yep. In the, the bold one. Right yep, there. got it. Good catch. Thank you. Got it. All right. So, any questions on the Canandaigua Crossing? No. I know it's very different, and a lot of what I've been talking to Shauna about to talk to our boards about planning board, zoning board, and ECB in particular is. You know, the form based code really does change the way we look at even some of these applications and everything. And it really changes um, some of the questions on an application. So we've got to develop a new application if, in fact, the town board authorizes the form based code uh, because it, it takes into account different aspects. And that's the difficult part for the, in particular, this applicant. I even went through it myself trying to compare their application to our form based code. And I wasn't even able, there's no way that 
you know, I could even help them make a determination because we didn't have some of the information because some of the questions are different for form-based code than they are for the traditional Euclidean zoning. So anyway, so, okay. So the next resolution is um, actually the adoption of a local law to put the form-based code into the town of Canandaigua code. So the first one is the adoption of the form-based code document the planning document, essentially. The second one, this one, actually adopts a local law putting the form-based code as a planning document into the town code. And the third one, which is the next one, actually rezones the properties that are in the form-based code and the form-based code sub-use area, mixed-use area, from their existing zoning their underlying zoning with the overlay, rezoning it from those to the form-based code and to the form-based code mixed use sub area. So what happens to those properties that are already there if you're changing the existing zoning to this? Mm -hmm. Right. If they're not in compliance, do they have to come into compliance? No, it's when they go forward okay, when so in doing something. It doesn't harm them, right, at all. So, so if they sell their building, then the new people will have to well, no. only when they're doing only something, they only if they're doing okay. constructing something All right. or something. But we've been having meetings now for years. Uh, I think we had, uh, I was trying to remember, we had a workshop actually in Uptown at Liberty Street Apartments in their community center. I know we had one, we had a huge one at the school bus garage with, I think, almost every single landowner in Uptown. Um, we had uh, the bus tour, we had three or four of them here at the town hall. There, there's been a series of meetings over the years. Um, the the largest of the landowners, I've been trying to really, and I know you had asked me about some of the smaller ones too, but um, the largest of the landowners, they're actually very excited about this because this gives them a lot of flexibility, even though their buildings themselves won't conform now, they would, with future growth and future expansion of their properties, look to bring those into conformance or more into conformance than they are now. Um, by placing the buildings as called out in the form-based code. So, okay, thank you. but like us, like let's use uh, Uptown Tire and Auto as a perfect example. So, um, you know, and I've had conversations with Jeff in the past, his building itself would not be in conformance with the form-based code. But Jeff has talked to me about the possibility of adding onto his building where the form-based code would actually allow him to bring the building closer to the road, therefore adding on and doing something like that. So if he chooses to do that in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know if I can answer any questions on any of that, but I, mm -hmm. anybody, anything? So, there's a lot involving all that. Oh, the one thing, there is a note here. Um, in the attachments, you'll see, when you go through the attachments, there is one specific map that we've added in the attachments. There is one parcel that is, associated with the purchase of the driving range that was not included on the list. It's a two acre parcel and it's a key parcel because it connects the driving range property to County Road 8, which allows us for future development to get people from uptown across the driving range property to the traffic light at County Road 8. Mm -hmm. So that parcel, including that is part of the form-based code, the same as the driving range parcel becomes very important. And it's that property is going through a transfer of ownership and both, both properties, it's a joint sale. It's that two acre parcel as well as the driving range parcel. And we've been talking with the new owner um, a lot about future development of that whole parcel and this form based code. Too? I'm sorry. Are there e there's easements on there too. There's there's it's weird because the Kandagwa National Bank also owns property that's right there, which has a lot of easements on that parcel because of the old roadway. This two acre parcel has a small easement on it, but it's it's different. <laughs> it's okay. it's 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 but a different piece. Uh, Tim Stone, okay, Tim Stone, and Tim that. Stone has wrote a letter in support of form-based code, and I believe he'll also be participating Monday night. So, uh, Tim Stone is the owner of City Mini Storage. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, from the watershed. Yep. Good person. Okay. Any questions on any of that? 
Okay, uh, the next resolution appoints our town planner also as a zoning officer so that she can do zoning law determinations because technically right now the planner is not authorized to do zoning law determinations. And so I have two questions on this. Yep. One, is is there a qualification that somebody has to meet to become a zoning officer and does she meet it or is it just... She meets it. She's got years of experience, okay. planning experience and everything. And it's so in some municipalities, there's a zoning officer or zoning inspector that is a separate hired person individual like the town of Farmington has a separate zoning inspector that, that that's all they do. In the past, we have actually also had separate zoning officers. Um, but uh, more recently, we've been using our code enforcement and then now our planner to do these zoning law determinations. Okay, and is this going to be like, is there an additional cost associated with this or no? Okay. This is strictly so that, you know, if somebody challenges her determination, that she can fall back on this resolution and say she was appointed by the town board to also serve as a zoning officer. Okay. So that the zoning board can, it's more about dotting the I's, crossing the T's type thing. I see we didn't get any raise for our snow removal. Well, well, I gotta leave here shortly because we're gonna go argue with the county here at nine o'clock. So. Oh, to get a little more money? Um, we'll see. Yeah, good so luck. Leave it there for now and we'll see what <laughs> okay. happens. Yes, sir. Generator maintenance. Uh, it's a three-year <laughs> generator agreement with Cummins. Uh, we have four generators that all use Cummins material equipment. They offer us a twice a year, they come and maintain it for our pump stations and uh, they're through the source well purchasing group. So we don't have to go out to bid every year for this. And so we have how many generators? Four? Four for just water. Four, and then they come twice a year? Yep. So this is about $500 a call? For give or take, yeah, they come yeah. out of Buffalo. Like that so that that last rate there would be from 2026 to 2029 or 28, whatever those numbers uh, are. No, go from this year till 26. I think it's a yeah, but the 43 25, 27 for, for the right? for first two, and then 43 That's for the big increase, right? Because the one of them's kind of warranty on it still because brand new. And after that goes up. So this maintenance agreement must cover parts. Some parts now depends if it's under warranty or not. Okay, so that's the difference there is the right. Thing. If there's a warranty on a brand new one right now, not that it's a lot of money, but it's, you know, it's almost 50%, it's almost 100%. Yeah. It's a big increase, but it, yeah, it's a, the first two years the one comes off of the warranty and then okay, it kicks in there. So, all right, go ahead. Doug. I'm sorry, no, go ahead. It's, uh, Ken Brackett's retiring. Uh, sort of. Uh, yeah, that's what I was really confused by that because I went down to 28. And I'm like, you weren't the only one confused by these resolutions. So, no. I'm retiring at the end of the month, and then the town's going to rehire him as an MEO. And then from there, he's going to be working with the stormwater, the lake shed people. And his salary be reimbursed back to the town plus equipment. Let's be equipment. clear, it's the watershed council. Council. Oh, sorry. okay. I was gonna say, yeah. And also yeah. I was like, wait a minute. So uh that way there, Kevin's got a bunch of grant money he wants to get work done with. So we'll bring Ken back to run our equipment and get paid back for his salary and our equipment. But by the council. By the council, yeah, through the grant. So it'll be another revenue source. So will he only be work? So what he will be doing is only work for the council or will he be doing also when we need him other things that he might assign him? Depends on how the interviews go in October for the for open people. position. Uh, but wait, this is an appointing him to a temporary oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so you know, he, if he can have him help us for a short period of time. He might be willing to do that. Right. I haven't spoken to him about that, but it's a seized old position. Okay. Like Doug said. So, um, so really, it's designed for 
helping with the stormwater projects Correct. and then getting those done. And Kevin does have a list. I know the big one is the Piercebrook subdivision mm -hmm. that they got to get going that one. middle There's of October. One yeah. Well, uh, on. But for like all of that, we're tracking, we're going to be tracking his time as well as our equipment, right. mileage, all that kind of stuff to reimburse like the from the council, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Correct. All right. Um, so then, so this, so with Ken retiring, this resolution actually promotes Larry Tyler to the working supervisor position Correct. that Ken has. And then the next one actually promotes uh, Travis Spike to a vacant working supervisor Correct. position. Yeah, at first I thought when I looked at the list, I'm like, oh, I think there's a duplicate here because it was like what, to work as supervisor. Oh, somebody must have just typed, copied it over. And then when I read them, I understood what was going on. Someone. And so the next resolution actually accepts and uh, recognizes. I see resignation. Oh, no, it's, I'm sorry. Um, the uh, Ken Brockett as his retirement. Oh. After 43 years, it's a long time of service to the town of Canada. Yes. And then hiring, hiring them back. I, the only thing I would think is, and I don't, it's not, I don't care about that much, but it, um, in 228, it would be nice to have kind of added something to, to assist in work that we'll be providing to the Watershed Council. You know what I mean? To be more clear, but not, it's not. I see that it would identify that same budget line too. We may want to look down the road at putting him in salary in a separate, separate yeah. budget. Oh, line. that'd be easier so to that, track it and make yeah, sure that we I'd don't have to with all the full time MEOs. Well, and then the other thing is, um, I'm sure that some of this is going to be relative to that Sucker Brook project. So I think we've got to relook right. at where yeah. the money comes and goes and all that stuff. And yeah. maybe well, we'll you, put that over into that. A different account. Try to do it before Monday so we can just. I, I think if we need a whole new resolution because yeah. we're going to need like a because <laughs> it's going to need um if we're especially if we're charging it to our capital project h18 which is i think where some of this probably should go because some of that like that pierce brook one mm -hmm. i think they're going to be charging some of that to the sucker brook so okay. that's we're, we just gotta yeah we just need to communicate with yeah. them make yep. sure we're all on the same page all right. Um, so the next resolution. A grant. That would be wonderful. There is a lot going on with grants. This has been a super, super duper busy week for me. But uh, the um, so essentially the the way I, let me explain it this way. The state of New York has a ton of CARES money that was passed on to it by the federal government for local municipalities. And this is separate from the ARPA money. I just want to be clear about that. And basically, a lot of municipalities have not applied for it, and a lot of municipalities don't qualify for it. And there's this pot of money that's been sitting there. And so uh, New York State Housing and Community Renewals, CDBG, has been looking for different opportunities to work with municipalities to spend some of this money, and it, it has to be related to COVID and the impacts of COVID. So you know, started looking at and having and set aside the, the whole separate thing, conversations relative to budget with Motion Junction for a second, but started having conversations with um, CDBG and said, you know, could we qualify? And they said immediately, they said, well, the town of Canada doesn't qualify because your LMI is too high. Your, you know, your, the low to moderate income, it's, it's not, you know, it's the wrong percentage. I said, well, what about for ADA accessibility? Because ADA accessibility is 100%. And uh, they said, yes, that qualifies. And I said, all right, what if I did a whole playground in a building that is fully ADA accessible and inclusive for everyone? And they said, maybe. They said, you have to submit the consultation form. And so I put together the consultation form. This resolution, but there's timing issues here also. That's what kind of is talking about in this resolution. But um, so the the applications are due by October 1st. Okay. So I went ahead yesterday and sent in the consultation form, hoping that you guys are going to be okay with me submitting that. And they got back to me and they want to schedule a call for next week. If they approve us actually making the application before October 1st, I need a public hearing for to on what it is that we're trying to do associated with this 
So I need to talk to you guys about establishing. It can be by Zoom, that's fine. It doesn't have to be in person, but just a quick meeting with a public hearing so that we can explain this grant application and what we would be doing. But essentially, what I've been told is up until now, the cap on these grant applications was $2 million. Because there's this pocket of money, they're willing to look at other things and they are particularly asking that, and that's the second piece of this, they are particularly asking, I have to pull up my working, it does, it's not in here. Uh, it's in the attachment, but it's not on the, on the resolution. They are particularly asking that municipalities that are going to make an application anyway to ask request for money for small business COVID relief. And then they would help determine and create the project for the small business relief. And so what they have actually said and suggested is if we're going to ask for money anyway, that we also ask for an additional half million dollars for small businesses with 25 or fewer employees in specifically the town of Canandaigua that were impacted by COVID-19. And that maybe there's some small grant monies, you know, maybe 15, $20,000 for these businesses that could help offset costs associated with COVID. So I went ahead and put it in there. So this is a three and a half million dollar request. Do I think we're going to get that? No. But in the attachment, I detailed 12 different action items so I could let them pick and choose which pieces of it we could get. But essentially, what I'm being told is that Motion Junction has, or a big Think Big Inclusion of Motion has raised about $700,000 for the playground. What I'm being told is essentially that we might be able to get the full reimbursement of the cost of the equipment, which was a half a million dollars. And we may be able to get the full cost of the rubberized material, which is $300,000, freeing up the money that they have raised for us to use that towards the construction of a building and finish this thing off with the full ADA pieces and everything else. So um, that's that's what I'm trying to do here. That's the gist of this. So. Outdoor. Because outdoor social okay. interaction in an outdoor setting is an approved COVID-19 relief. Yes. And especially when it's inclusive and ADA compliant. Right. So I, um, my caution when I look at this thing, small business COVID relief recovery fund, mm -hmm. is the amount of administration that we would need to do as a town to be able to even administer something like that. So that to me, that one really scares me. So the good news about that is that's where honestly, and we have an LDC meeting at 10. I think the LDC can be very helpful because the LDC last year actually did a survey of all the businesses of the ones that we're willing mm -hmm. to respond. And uh, the, the survey actually identified Canada with businesses, both city and town that um, had COVID impact. And I think that they could be very helpful. Plus the folks at uh, CDBG, they actually have the template. The, basically this so is this is what, okay. I, think it, I think it would be pretty streamlined. Obviously this would have to be specific for town of Canandaigua businesses right. if they fund that. So this would not extend to the city of Canandaigua businesses. You know, one of the things I had a brief conversation with Matt Horn about this, and he said, well, let's see if we can get you guys your money for motion junction. And then if they tack on this extra, for the small business is fine. And then we could ask the city to go ahead and do the same thing. And then we could look at maybe the LDC doing it for both the city and town and, and keeping them separate, but yeah, offering I, it to I both. Mean, I, so. I am a small business owner and I've taken advantage of many of the COVID relief mm -hmm. things. And they are just like nightmares to go through, administer whatever they're at. So anyway, I, I was like, oh, we're going to end up having to hire somebody to do it. But if the LDC could do it, that's another solution. Yeah. Good idea. And then the LDC also, we I just share, since we mentioned that, the um, yesterday was the deadline. We submitted a amazing $20 million grant application for uptown, downtown to the lakefront, including the historic district is the connection piece. And uh, we had, the LDC had hired Bergman Associates to do that. It's a phenomenal uh, grant application. Uh, I think it's going to be an extremely strong contender. Um, the preliminary information I've heard back from the people that have looked at it says, you know, very, very good chance of being a finalist. And then we'll wow. see from there. So uh, that would be huge, be huge, huge, huge. It's a, uh, the grant application itself is 108 pages long. It's, uh, 
it's a very in-depth uh, application. So anyway, uh, last resolution here before the sureties, I believe, is the uh, accepting the resignation of Mark Scott, who came to us a couple of years ago now uh, in our water department and thanking him for his service. He's uh, retiring. Okay. And are we hiring his, our replacement for him? Uh, not at this point. We okay. will be. We'll need it. But Jim hasn't gotten that far yet. Okay. So, uh, and then the result of the uh, sureties. Oh, the alcoholic beverage one. Um, look at that first line. Whereas town board expressing not opinion or is it no opinion? It's supposed to be no. I'm sorry. Good catch. Thank you. I just thought, I was like, well, maybe that's a kind of a legal way to say things that I'm not aware of and I don't want to be. Uh, this must just be a formality for them going through their liquor license application. Right. Yeah. That's why it's in the back near the uh, erosion. Because <laughs> these are the like, oh, okay, yeah, we know about this. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that's all right. That does that. I see that that says Rochester Point Road on the, the very last one. Just I'm not oh, sure that should it. be. I think that's the that's right register one. point drive. Right. Right. Okay. So that's, that's a, the right. That one. could be a real okay. street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Does anyone have any other questions relative to the agenda? Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any other items that they think are pertinent to finance meeting today? Mm -hmm. All right. So I think we can adjourn the meeting. Anyone, any objections? Mm -hmm. Great meeting of germ. Thank you. Happy birthday, everyone. Happy Thanks, birthday, Kathy. Happy birthday, Kathy. Oh, happy birthday.